very much like cranial nerves 3, 4 and 6, the glossopharyngeal nerve, or cranial nerve 9, and the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, are intrinsically linked, not only with their anatomical relationships, but also with their functions. While both cranial nerve 9 and 10 have sensory, motor and autonomic components, the testing of these nerves is relatively limited, with both being assessed with phonation, swallowing and checking the sensation of the larynx. There are some additional sensory fibres on the vagus nerve getting information from the lungs, heart and abdominal viscera, but obviously these are not tested during the clinical assessment. We can see how closely linked cranial nerve 9 and 10 are if we have a look at the direct anatomy, with both nerves arising from the lateral medulla and leaving the skull through the jugular foramen. We can see the proximity of both nerve roots as they arise from around the pyramidal tracts. The glossopharyngeal nerve has a mix of sensory and motor fibres. In terms of sensory fibres, they're going to innervate the pharynx, the middle ear and the posterior one-third of the tongue and carotid sinus body. In terms of motor functions, there the nerve is going to supply the stylopharyngeus muscle, which allows elevation of the larynx, pharynx and thus the initiation of swallowing, and also a parasympathetic innervation to the parotid gland. Now we need to have a look in your mouth, if you'd like to take a sip of water. And just swallow it, please. Okay. Any problems there? No. Okay. At home, do you have any problems with eating or drinking? No. Okay, so no coughing afterwards. No. Excellent. So what we'd like to do now is I'm just going to have a look in the back of your mouth. So if you could open wide, please. And a nice long R, please. Ah. Uh... Superb. Okay. Now I'm particularly certain that anybody who's read a textbook explaining the examination of the cranial nerves will look at that demo just and think, hold on, is that it for cranial nerve 9 and 10? Well, many parts of the examination of these two nerves are done passively. So we need to determine if a patient has any dysphonia, an inability to speak due to problems with the mouth, tongue or vocal cords, well, we've been having a good conversation with them, thus we should be able to rule that out immediately. And similarly, we should be able to confirm that they have no dysarthria, so difficulty actually creating words, although they're linguistically normal. So slurring speech might be a good example of that. Getting the patient to swallow should be part of the examination of cranial nerve 10, so why was that done before parts of the cranial nerve 9 examination? Well, simply, we have to look in the patient's mouth for cranial nerve 9, so it makes sense to have them swallow first to ensure that that area is clear. Part of testing cranial nerve 9 involves looking at the movement of the palate, and that can be done by getting the patient to phonate, so say R, we're looking for the movements both of the palate and the uvula. What we'd expect to find is that the uvula moves up nice and centrally, However, if there is a lesion affecting cranial nerve 9, which, given to proximity, would probably also be affecting cranial nerve 10, we'd find that the uvula would deviate away from the side that had the lesion when we got the patient to phonate. Lesions such as this can be seen with strokes and base of skull fractures, and obviously space-occupying lesions. That might also give rise to the patient having a problem with a cough, specifically if we were talking about a cranial nerve 10 lesion. The cough would have been identified when the patient swallowed water. Given that the vagus nerve receives sensory fibres from the lungs and carries parasympathetic to the lungs, heart and abdominal viscera, if there are problems with cranial nerve 10, then we may see issues with blood pressure, in summary, whilst cranial nerve 9 and 10 are exceptionally important, and lesions affecting these nerves can cause a patient significant difficulty, the actual examination from a clinical skills perspective is very straightforward. Mm -hmm.